Terrence Howard did try to drop a potential gem on JRE Podcast 2171, and Eric Weinstein did actually acknowledge that, but it was rather difficult for the audience to really see what this potential gem is because just because of how Joe Rogan has his podcast set up and the camera angles, um, they're not set up to zoom in on objects, let's say on the table. They're set up to film the, the conversation between individuals. So the potential gem that Terrence has is are those three-dimensional objects that I'll assume he 3D printed out. Now, it's almost impossible for us to really see them again just because there's you know they weren't they weren't zoomed in on close enough Terence Howard's three-dimensional objects are ex an extrapolation into three dimensions from a two-dimensional pattern that's called the flower of life so I'm going to teach you how you can draw the flower of life for yourself now, why, why would we want to undertake this exercise? Well, especially for those of you who are what we call kinesthetic learners, that means you learn by physically doing something, or those of you who are visual learners and learn by seeing something, like a diagram, and maybe even those of you who are musical or rhythmic learners who learn by a repeated pattern, um, you might just, this might help you have a sort of more internal understanding of what this flower of life geometric pattern is and perhaps gain some insight into what sort of pulled Terence Howard into becoming intrigued with this pattern. So the flower of life is really a series of overlapping circles. Um, there's 19 overlapping circles shown right here. Now to have you draw this we're going to start with the innermost area of that diagram which is referred to as the seed of life and that consists of just seven over overlapping circles so what you're going to need is a simple compass hopefully they give you a little golf pencil with that compass um, if not get one from Ikea and then all you need is just regular paper is fine um, maybe an eraser if you care to so start by making sure that little pencil is super sharp because it's going to be a drag. You don't want to have to take that out while we're in the middle of doing this diagram. Um, sharpen that pencil, insert it into the compass, and then close the compass so the little pointy metal tip is also touching that pencil lead. Now make sure you push the pencil down a little bit more so that the pencil lead is just maybe about a millimeter um, lower than the sharp metal point. That's because we're going to open the compass. So open it up to approximately uh, two centimeters to one inch. Um, now the other word of warning is don't swap out the little pencil from a longer pencil or a pen, mainly because that just interferes with um, trying to draw the circle when you spin it around uh, that top little um, point. Now you might be tempted to try to draw these series of circles with a template, but the one issue with that is we must be able to see where the center of the circle is, which is why just the old-fashioned simple compass is the best because you can see that little um, little hole in the paper where you stick that pointy sharp part of the compass in. Okay, so now that you've set your compass, just choose a random spot more or less in the middle of the paper and draw a single circle. Now, the next step, you're going to place the point of the compass, meaning the metal point of the compass, somewhere along that line that you just drew. I chose to go straight up to about 12 o'clock and place the metal point of the compass right there. So now, draw the second circle. So now you have two overlapping circles. It kind of looks like what we call that Venn diagram or a bubble diagram. Um, and now, for the third step, notice that you have two points where the two circles intersect. It doesn't matter which point of intersection you pick, I arbitrarily pick the one that's going counterclockwise. 
So place the point of your metal, uh, the metal point of the compass on that point of intersection and draw the third circle. And then I think you can perhaps see where we're going with this. You're going to find that next point of intersection between the third circle and the original circle. Put the point of the compass there, draw the fourth, then the fifth, and finally, and uh, finally I put the fifth and the sixth um, circles together in this last step. So now you have seven overlapping circles and you can kind of see that little flower in the um, in the center central circle. Now if you'd like to you could draw a circle a larger circle around this whole group and call that the seed of life. But what we're going to do next is just continue. Uh, we're going to add more circles to form what we call the flower of life. So now it's the same kind of rule as we used before. You're going to put your uh, the metal point of the compass where you find two lines intersecting. So, um, you, I mean, you could do these in any order that you like, but I've kind of put arrows where I'm going to place the compass next. So, uh, I'm going to do this all in one step. You can see there's six points of intersection here, so I'm going to add the next layer of six circles. So go ahead and do that. Okay, now similarly we can see again that there's another six points of in six points of intersection. So we're going to add our final layer of six circles going around the circle. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have six plus six plus seven in that original se uh, flat, um, seed. So that's a total of 19 circles. Now you can see in this um, particular uh, configuration, not every single, not not every single of um, of the 19 circles has a complete little flower diagram contained in it. So what you can do, if you like, is you can take your compass and again follow the rule of putting the metal point on a point of intersection and you can kind of complete these little flowers. I think by now you can kind of see the pattern of how this um, gets formed. And you can complete the little uh, flowers within each of the 19 circles. Or you can just leave it as such and it's still considered the flower of life. If you would like to, you could then draw a, a bigger circle. Something tells me that your compass isn't going to be quite big enough to draw that bigger circle around all 19, but that's fine. Uh, we've generated the pattern that um, Terence Howard used to get to the next step, which is these 3D um, volumes or uh, poly, well, they're not polygons, but he, he generated 3D uh, volumes from this flower of life. And that was the um, idea that um, Eric Weinstein really gave him credit for it because he said, hey, this is another way of looking at the, at the flower of life. Now, I, I should warn you, you can do tons of research, research on the flower of life, and there have been many individuals and cultures who've assigned But I'd rather just treat this as pure just geometry at this point. I don't want to add any more layers of meaning to this um, geometric pattern. Okay, so what we Weinstein was pointing out is um, Terence actually used this pattern of overlapping circles as if it was kind of a floor plan, if you will, just as a floor plan indicates an entire 3D building. So for example, I'll show you the floor plan for St. Peter's and then a, a, a drawing of St. Peter's. So this is kind of, this is an analogy for um, what Terence Howard did with the flower of life and then his 3D uh, objects. Now these objects are a little bit complicated, but before um, we jump to that, which was, I don't, I don't want to say his invention, but his, his emphasis, um, there are other uh, 3D, uh, what we call platonic solids, that we can generate from this um, flower, flower of life pattern. So that takes a little more, um, not just work, but a little more uh, uh, insight, so we'll make a second video about that.
but I hope you enjoyed making your flower of life. If you have any questions about it, please be sure to leave that in the comments below. If you found this video helpful and you care to make a contribution, please head over to buymeacoffee.com slash Hamaguchi Fight, or you can scroll over to the right and leave a super thanks. If you love having interesting discussions such as this, you're welcome to join our members only forum. Head up to the join button in the banner or go down and click on the link in the description. Thanks for listening. See you soon.